Hello and welcome to my video. Earlier this year, NVIDIA released an Adaptive Sync driver update for NVIDIA GPUs. As a result, this Acer 4K 32-inch FreeSync monitor now has the ability to use its FreeSync feature with NVIDIA GPUs. To set it up for this monitor, you first need to enable FreeSync in the monitor settings. To do that, press a button on the back of the monitor to bring up your options. Then select Menu. Scroll down and select Gaming and toggle FreeSync on. Once you have done this, you will now be able to set up G-Sync in the NVIDIA Control Panel. Open the NVIDIA Control Panel. Select Set up G-Sync under the Display tab and then check Enable G-Sync, G-Sync Compatible. You also need to check Enable Settings for the selected display model. Then click Apply at the bottom of the screen. You'll notice that there is text that says Selected Display is not validated as G-Sync compatible. This is because this monitor has a limited range where Adaptive Sync works and is not up to NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible standards. The range for this particular monitor is rated at 40 to 60 frames per second. But in my testing, it's better to be safely above 40 frames per second so that you don't run into issues. This is NVIDIA's Pendulum demo, which allows you to test G-Sync's functionality. For this demo, I have turned the monitor's frame rate counter on. It is the yellow number on the top right of the screen. When that number displays a static 60, it means that the monitor's refresh rate is outside of the FreeSync range. When this happens, you'll get screen tearing. This demo allows you to adjust the frame rate. I have found that this demo works best when you set the frame rate between 42 and 60 frames per second. I'll put a link to this demo in the description so that you can check it out for yourself. Next. I've recorded some footage of Just Cause 3 to try to illustrate how Adaptive Sync gets more out of your gaming hardware. Before Adaptive Sync, this is how I experienced this game on an overclocked RTX 2070. Graphics were set to the max, but I turned resolution down to 3200 by 1800 which is a custom resolution created in the NVIDIA control panel. This was done in order to get the frame rate mostly locked to 60 frames per second at a relatively high resolution. However, you can see that the GPU is not fully utilized. The GPU could be doing a bit more. In this second example, I'll show what happens when you try to enable VSync in this game at native 4K with maximum settings with an overclocked RTX 2070 without adaptive sync. Since the game is not able to hit 60 frames per second most of the time, VSync causes the frame rate to lock mostly to 30 frames per second, and the GPU usage percent drops dramatically as a result. You could turn VSync off and get a much higher frame rate, but then you get screen tearing. And the final example is the game running at native 4K with VSync turned off. Here you see the GPU percent is nearly fully utilized. The frame rate is in the 50s most of the time, which is safely inside this particular monitor's FreeSync zone, and it feels and looks great. If you do not have an adaptive sync display, you will get screen tearing in this scenario. But with FreeSync enabled on this monitor, the experience was smooth and tear free. In the end, Adaptive Sync on GeForce is a good thing. This feature allows you to get more out of your gaming hardware, bringing a tear-free gaming experience to a relatively low cost. This concludes this video. Thanks for watching.